Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Lord of Israel, who comes to set us free, the mighty Savior, who comes to show mercy, the dawn from on high, who guides us into peace. Amen. Let us come before God in confession. To you, O God, we lift up our souls. You know us through and through. We confess our sins to you. Remember not our sins. Remember us with your steadfast love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Children of God, Come with joy and draw water from the well of salvation. Remember that in the gift of baptism, your sin is washed away in the name of Jesus. You belong to Christ. You are anointed to serve. Stand up and raise your heads. The reign of God is near. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the promised gifts of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord of righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Word of God word of life. Thanks be to God. In this season of Advent, we pray for God's peace. Christ is our life and the source of our peace. We witness the hostility between nations and neighbors. Christ is our life and the source of our peace. We see a world full of fractured relationships and unforgiving hearts. Christ is our life and the source of our peace. We seek relief from our own inner turmoil and restlessness. Christ is our life and the source of our peace. This morning we light two candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace. This candle reminds us that Christ came into our world to restore peace and that only through trust in God's word and his promises can we find our own inner peace. We remember that Christ is the Prince of Peace who taught us that through simple acts of love and forgiveness, peace is spread throughout the world. A reading from Philippians. I thank my God Every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you 
with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow, overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to reread part of the text message that Pat just read from Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is an honor and a privilege to be here with you this morning in your lovely historic building. I was telling Deborah and um, Pastor Allen that I was raised in Fort Wayne, Indiana. But one thing I didn't tell them was that in our eighth grade yearbook, you had to put down who your hero was. And I said my hero was Reverend Henry Melchior Muhlenberg. <laughs> <laughs> it was as if I had landed from outer space with <laughs> my <laughs> eighth grade <laughs> colleagues. And I don't know exactly why I said that, but I'm glad I did. <laughs> and I'm glad to be with you this morning. I bring you greetings from Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, who, if you follow social media at all, know that she laid the wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier on Friday, December 7th. I also bring you greetings from another one of my colleagues, Kristen Opolinsky, who is a daughter of this congregation. And she told me on several occasions how supportive you were of her when she was a young adult in global mission. Something you may not know about young adults in global mission is that 30% of them come back and they go to seminary. So it is our premier leadership development program. She also then said, you know, they supported me in seminary and it, with scholarships. And then she said, they really came through for me. And I said, well, I'm going to tell them that you are really coming through for them. <laughs> so your investment in her is paying off, paying off for the church. You've invested in her and many others, and the results are very positive. And I'm grateful for the ministry of Deaconess Deborah and, and Pastor Allen and your lay leadership. Together, 
we can do more. My main mission here this morning is simply to say thank you. Thank you for your generosity, especially around the ELCA world hunger. You have this wild notion that all should be fed. Your pastor told you that I'm the director of the campaign for the ELCA. It's a big $198 million effort, and so your gifts to hunger count for that campaign. Your gifts to the Fund for Leaders count for that campaign. When you give to missionaries, that counts for the campaign. And I'm going to make a presentation during the time in between the services and invite you to, to join us. Um, I'd like to do some more information, share some inspiration, and also an invitation to continue um, to be a part of it. I'm glad to be working with Jody here this morning. It's, it's just great, and I love to watch signing. Now, one of the things that Alan didn't tell you was that I am the world's leading expert on outdoor church signs. It's true. It's true. I even wrote a book on it. So if you Google me, you can find uh, the book. And so I want to share three of my favorite signs with you first sign had the morning sermon title and the evening sermon title. And the morning sermon title was Jesus Walks on the Water. And the evening sermon title was Searching for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> now, two appropriate messages, but when juxtaposed with each other, might be a little confusing. But you know, there's, there's no confusion here this morning as we light the candles of hope and peace because we know that Jesus brings hope. Jesus brings peace and calls us to be peacemakers and peacekeepers. My second favorite church sign also had a sermon title on it. They were having a sermon series, and the title of the sermon was, What is Hell? And then the sign changer added an invitation, come early and listen to the choir practice. <laughs> now, I know that wasn't here, because you have Karen as your minister uh, of, uh, of music, and I don't suppose the sign changer had a very harmonious reception <laughs> when they came to church. But my favorite, my favorite church sign of all time was above a, a wonderful building, the doors of a wonderful building like this, and carved in marble were these words, the house of God, the gate of heaven. And then handwritten on a piece of cardboard in crayon, duct taped to the front door were these words, please use side entrance. <laughs> <laughs> so even when we want to say y'all come, sometimes we don't have the implementation plan figured out. But you are a welcoming congregation. You are a reconciling in Christ congregation. Worship is at the center of all that you do. Your ministry goes outside these walls to the Burke's Women's Crisis Center, to Hope's Table, to St. John Food Pantry, to, to Mary's Shelter, just to name a few of the many things that you do to connect and share the love of Jesus in your community. Our lessons today and also our time of year give us a mashup of John the Baptist, the Grinch who stole Christmas, and St. Nicholas. It's quite an unholy trinity if, if you think about it. John the Baptist, the Grinch, St. Nicholas. Now John the Baptist was quite the advanced man. He proclaimed a reversal of fortune he often called his congregation a brood of vipers, 
a bunch of snakes. And that's the first thing they tell you in sermon writing class not to do. <laughs> he was a prophet. He was a proclaimer. He declared, proclaimed the way of the Lord. If John the Baptist was alive today, he'd be on talk radio or cable TV. He'd have lots of followers, and many people would like parts of his message. His message was very basic, simple, you might even say. Repent and get baptized. In other words, turn your life around. His message was basic. Get ready for the coming of the Lord. He took on King Herod, and he ended up losing his head. His mission was to point to Jesus as the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Holy Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. If you go to any major art museum in the world, you'll see a picture of John the Baptist standing there and then pointing to the Lamb, to the Holy Lamb of God. His ministry was, to for, was foretold way back in the book of Malachi. See, I'm sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Now, there's a new version of the, the movie, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. And I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. You know, the Grinch tries to steal Christmas, and then he has an epiphany of sorts. And Dr. Seuss, who I think is a really good theologian, has the Grinch thinking and saying these words. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, and bags. And he puzzled and he puzzled till his puzzler was sore. And then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas means a little bit more. Three Sundays ago, I was with some siblings of yours, the members at Ascension Lutheran Church in Thousand Oaks, California. As you know, about mm, a week or so before Thanksgiving, there was a mass shooting at the Borderline Cafe, of which there were alums from California Lutheran, which is very close to the campus, also students from Pepperdine Lutheran. And so that happened. And then the day after that happened, the wildfires came. Just about everybody in this congregation at Ascension, Thousand Oaks, California, got evacuated, or one of their loved ones was evacuated. In many cases, they were given about 15 minutes notice to leave their house. And I heard story upon story of what people took in their car with them, right? I mean, a real moment of decision-making, a discernment. What's important? What do we want to keep? What can the fires consume? I shared with them, and this is a congregation, like your congregation, that does so much to help other people, that all the congregations in the ELCA were praying for them. 
The Grinch was a taker. St. Nicholas, whose day was on Thursday, was a giver. He helped out people who had no help, no hope, and who without some divine intervention would have had a life that was very lonely and cold and dismal. And like Jesus, he reached out to people and gave them a hand up. You know, as well as I do, that life at times can turn our hearts into being Grinch-like. Sometimes we think there simply isn't enough. And yet, because of Jesus, we know that he came to have life, that we might have life, and have that life abundantly. You, as a congregation, believe that there is more than enough. You believe that Advent is really about getting one's soul in shape for the coming of the Lord. It's important to get the lights up, to send the cards, to buy gifts. But what is paramount, what is most important, is preparing the way of the Lord right here, right now, in this holy space and place. The gospel lesson, you, you heard how Luke was so specific in setting that in its historical context. This saving message of Jesus Christ, the bread of life, is coming into our world right now, in these days, in so many and various ways. I want to close by telling you a little story. In my second parish in Wichita, Kansas, it was an old Swedish parish. I was a young pastor back in those days. I knew everything. And if you didn't know I knew everything, all you had to do was ask me, and I would tell you <laughs> that I knew everything. And in this beautiful church, they had never, ever used real bread before for communion. And I'm a bread baker, so I, I wanted them to taste and see that the Lord was good and have this real bread experience. They had also never, ever done continuous communion before, you know, where you come down the center aisle and go back by the sides and, and all of that. So I think probably on my second or third Sunday there, we were going to use real bread and have continuous communion. We had to dress the ushers up in like orange vests with flares, you know, to direct people. And we had to print almost footprints on the floor because the altar guild was concerned how they might get back to their pews and, and all this. This is way too much change, you know, for these good people at Emmanuel Lutheran Church, Kansas City. And there I was in the center aisle breaking off big pieces of bread and putting it in people's hands, you know. And this one petite woman came up. I learned later her name was Lillian. And I broke off this big piece of bread, put it in her hand. I said, the body of Christ given for you. And she looked at it. And she looked up at me. And she broke off a piece of it and tried to give some of it back to me and said, it's too much for me. And our eyes locked. And I said, it's too much for all of us. And in that moment, there was a great deal of peace and hope. Well, over the years, Lillian really came to grow in her appreciation of the, the Eucharist, of Holy Communion. And I left that congregation after five years to serve another congregation in St. Louis. And in Lillian's later years, I was told that even though she had early onset of Alzheimer's, that when the pastors came to give her communion, 
and often the conversation was all over the landscape. When they took out that wafer, when they took out a little cup of wine or grape juice and started saying the words in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it to, gave his, to his disciples. Lillian would say those words with the pastors. And as soon as communion then was over, kind of the clarity was over as well. But that gift of bread and wine was very orienting, was very centering for Lillian and for all of us. It is too much for all of us. May God be with you as you count down these days to the great celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Prepare your church to share the good news, life-giving God. Put your word within us and dwell among us. Send us out to proclaim the mercy and salvation that abides in you. Bless this congregation and the partnership in the gospel we share with the ELCA. Give strength and joy to worship leaders, musicians, and all among us who help prepare the way for the coming of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Protect your congregation, life-giving God. Sustain the mountains and hills. Restore the rivers. Bring recovery to areas ravaged by fire, flood, storm, earthquake, and accidents. Move us to care for your creation in all its forms and richness. Purify the hearts of people throughout the world. Mold us into peacemakers. Remove the hatred and fear that live within us and among us. Raise up leaders rooted in your love and fed by your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who hurt life-giving God. Wrap them in your tender care. We pray for Charlie, Dick, Carl, and Betty, Nancy, Ed, and Jacob. We mourn with the families of Esther Williamson and Lucy Ruxius. We remember with thanksgiving the generations who have shown us your faithfulness. And we pray for our members, Anne, Dick, and Barbara, Matt, Wayne, and Elsa, and Ashley, Brian, and Lennox, that you would strengthen them in faith and increase their joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Confident that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we bring to you these prayers and those unspoken in the name of Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Again, I welcome you to worship today. Um, special welcome to, to Ron. Uh, so good to have you with us today. He will be leading our forum, as he said, over in the auditorium. So join us for that and for some time of, of fellowship. We also have today, after our second service, our super soup and lunch, um, super soup and salad lunch. Um, you are welcome to come back for that. Um, would love to have you here. That'll be in the hints room after the 11 o'clock service. Giving opportunities abound this time of year. Um, let me just highlight the angel tree is up with ornaments for both um, Cafe Esperanza, which is the pay-as-you-can cafe that Hope Lutheran is beginning um, in cooperation with the Reading Lutheran Parish here in Reading. Um, also, there are ornaments for Tenth and Pen for art supplies and clothing for the students at our elementary school that we support. Today is the last day to make dedications for poinsettias and world hunger gifts for Christmas. You may make your gifts as long as you want. You can make them next year if you'd like. But if you want the dedications included in the Christmas Eve bulletin, please get them in today. There are additional forms for that in the back of the church and um, also up in the um, narthex.
There are copies of the proposed budget and bylaw changes at the back of the church um, in the area back here. We have our congregational meeting next Sunday. It'll be at the conclusion of this service and at the beginning of the 11 o'clock service. You may come to either one of those. You may come to both if you'd like, but you're only allowed to vote once. Um, also in the back, you'll find your 2019 offering envelopes. If you have not used offering envelopes um, in the past year, there, were no, there will, will be none assigned for you for the coming year. However, if you want them, just let the office know and we will issue some for you. If you can't find them here, you can check up in the Narthex. We tried to sort them by who goes to which services, but sometimes we miss that. Also, one more thing, in the conference room today, we have we continue our fair trade fair and our book fair. Um, if you want some, some Christmas gifts for people, um, head on over there um, either before the forum or after the forum. Or and Pam Walkley will be in the building. Okay, Pam will be in there to help you. Okay, very good. Does anybody have anything else for opportunities in this coming week? Thank you to everybody who um, helped with ICANN yesterday. We had a wonderful time there. Deborah. Christmas caroling next Sunday for anyone who wants to bring a little joy to homebound members. Thank you, Deborah. And again, your um, bulletin cover, um, take it home, fold it, set it up, and use it as your second station for your Advent prayers at home. Um, I suggested you could put them at four corners of a room, four different rooms in your home. When I got mine home, I decided the best place was four corners of my dining room table, which worked very well, too. So. Um, there are additional candles available also up in the uh, narthex. Um, and some back here too. Very good. And we also have um, last week's cover. So you can set up that station if you missed it last week. All right. Let's worship God with our offering. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring, we bring before, before you the precious fruits of your creation, and, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God fills the hungry with good things. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we give you thanks that in this bread and cup we have feasted again on your endless love. Let that love overflow more and more in our lives, that we may be messengers to prepare your way, harvesters of justice and righteousness, and bearers of your eternal word, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> may God direct your ways in his peace, make you abound in love for one another and for all, and strengthen your hearts until the coming of our Lord Jesus. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.